What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the new demo of Above Snakes. We checked this out about a year ago during a Steam festival. The game was very, very early on with regards to the prototype that we played, but it showed some promise. If you didn't have a chance to catch that video and you don't know what Above Snakes is, this is a survival sort of roguelike-y, I guess roguelite-y, I don't even really know if it's permadeath in all honesty in this build anyways, I haven't really thrown myself into a pit or anything to find out, but effectively it's a survival game where you build the world around you. So the world is contrived, or I guess comprised of little tiles, and you start out with one tile, and as you gather materials and chop down trees, you're able to expand the size of the world, which then has new points of interest, which will then give you access to new resources, which then lets you build more advanced tiles, so on and so forth. It's got base building, it's got hunting, it's got foraging, it's got gathering and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today and take a look because the game just went up on Kickstarter trying to find funding in order to make the game some total. And so anyways, I'll have a link to the Kickstarter down below. I don't normally cover Kickstarter stuff, but I feel like the previous demo was promising enough that I'm okay sticking my neck out. I don't know, dude. It's like one of those things with Kickstarter. It's like I've been burned so many times covering Kickstarter things, and then they just don't turn out. So, like, I'm always a little bit jumpy about anything regarding Kickstarter. But I'm going to put the link down below just in case you think the game looks promising. On top of that, I'll also have a link to the game proper on Steam just in case you want to wishlist it over there and wait and see what happens with it. I'll also have a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down below in case you wanted to swing on through and say what's up. But that's about all I got, so let's get cruising. Alright, so here we are inside the game. You start out with nothing but a clutched stick in your hand. And a stick we shall use to gather and get the things that we desire. Game's pretty simple. You move around with W, A, S, and D. And then you also use left click to interact with things. The game almost has like Diablo S controls when it comes to like clicking on things and doing things. It mostly controls like your direction though when you're hitting stuff. There's some berry bushes around here. I think it'd probably be a really, really good idea to make sure we secure the vittles first. So let me grab those. And with the vittles secured, we now have a big old grip of huckleberries. I don't think I've ever had a huckleberry. They don't really have huckleberries where I live, as far as I know. We got blackberry, we got raspberry. All I gotta do is go down to any creek, and you'll find a whole mess of this stuff. Just watch out, because, like, the deer like to go in there and eat them. And, like, I don't know if deer like projectile pee or anything, but maybe they... they it's always possible that the berries have been projectile peed on by, like, wildlife, and in general, I try to avoid ingesting projectile pee. Now that we have a couple of sticks, I think we should be able to make an axe, so let's go ahead and get that done. It's pretty easy to assign this stuff. Uh, actually, there we go. You can only do it from the inventory menu, not the crafting menu, but you basically just mouse over it and you hit the number that you want it to be assigned under. Now that we have an axe, that's going to give us the magical ability to chop down these things known as trees, so I'm going to get underway with that. I'm going to gather up like a nice wood stockpile, and then we'll decide how we want to expand our world, and I'll show you kind of the fundamental mechanic of the game. One thing I am a fan of is, like, once you've built a tool in this game, I don't think you need to build another one unless it's a direct upgrade. Like, the axe that we have right now doesn't have the appearance of having any kind of durability or whatever, and I actually really, really like that. Like, if, I feel like if the game has, like, an easy repair mechanic where it's just, like, one log to repair your equipment, I don't mind there being a durability system, but, like, dude, I cannot stand it when survival games have durability on your equipment and it's, like, a huge pain in the butt to, like, restore it. Like, basically, it's easier just to craft another one. That's something that just, like, tilts me. I'm not a fan of it. These little bushes right here, they'll give us plant fibers. The plant fibers are going to be useful for future projects, but as of right now, not... Not really that useful, just kind of like, we'll store it up for later. Okay, so we've got a decent supply of, like, basic stuff. We've got some flint, we've got some sticks, we've got some plant fibers. At this point, we kind of got to decide what we want to do with all this stuff. I do think that it's not a terrible idea to go ahead and get a workbench. So I'm going to throw that together. It might not also be a bad idea to get a bonfire, although I've only got the one flint. So we might want to save that for a little bit. This game does have modular building, so you are able to make kind of a Rust-style base if you want to, and in fact, you're encouraged to do so. I don't think that that was a feature the last time we played the game. I actually, I don't think that that had been implemented just yet, but as you can see, you can build stuff, you can get furniture, you can get like smelters and tanneries and all that kind of fun stuff. I think you get the blueprints by exploring around, and so it may be a decent idea 
just to explore for a minute. So let's go ahead and create a new tile that we can kind of plumb through. In exploring the world, it looks like we can either make train tracks, it looks like we can make a prairie, or it looks like we can make a prairie. I think I'm going to make train tracks. That sounds like a lot of fun. So there you go. We've got a train station that now exists right next to our central base. It looks like there's some desert style things out here like trees. It looks like we also have a well. That's actually really, really nice because that's going to be right next to our base. It looks like there's a searchable point right here as well. We only got like one log out of it. So unfortunately, it wasn't quite the treasure stash of like machine guns and firearms that I was hoping it would be. Doesn't look like we can break down the train or otherwise really interact with the train at all. However, since I'm unfamiliar with this tree type right here, I think I'm going to knock it down just so that I have a little bit of knowledge as to like what this tree does. And in fact, it looks like this tree does not drop sticks. Instead, it drops plant fiber. There's a couple of coals on the ground as well. So I'm guessing that this guy right here... Can I actually like farm out of this thing? Oh, there's a coal on the other side though when it went semi-transparent right there. All right, well, coal's kind of hard to come by, so I'll go ahead and grab it. There we go. It also looks like, oh, there's a food basket right there. Sweet. Okay, uh, we should probably go ahead and eat some food by the by. We've got 15 huckleberries. You do have meteor, or me you do have meters in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen uh, for your hunger, your thirst, your sleep, your mentality. And I would recommend that you keep those things as up as you can keep them. And so I'm going to fill up my food real fast. And since we have a well available, I think I'll probably also drink a little bit of that to top off my water. That well's not going anywhere as far as I know. Man-made wells are not known for their ability to kind of like move around and change on you. And so I'm not that worried about it. There's a tribal village over here or we can have farmland. Let's go ahead and add a tribe village over here and see how that helps us out. Looks like we've got some raspberries or something right here. Let's go ahead and grab those. I like having a large, oh, thimble berries. Also, never heard of those. Fair enough. I'm learning all kinds of things about horticulture right now. Uh, it looks like there's a tanned hide up there on that rack. Okay, so that gave us a bunch of new recipes. There's another tanned hide right there. Am I able to sleep inside these teepees over here? I don't know if I can actually get inside said teepee. There we go. So we can search the fur bed or we can rest. Let's go ahead and search it. We got some bones. It looks like searching actually has the effect of breaking it down. And since I don't really want to build my own base, I may actually use this as my base of operations. It's already got a bed. It's already got like the little things we need in order to get by. So why mess with a situation that's working? You know what I mean? Why fix what ain't broken? Uh, one thing that is pretty cool is I do like the graphical stylings. I think they've got a really nice balance in between kind of low fidelity, low poly design, but just enough detail and artistry and kind of stylization there to really get the idea across. Like they're using just enough shading and like just enough this, just enough that. Can I break this right here? Oh, I'm breaking that thing. Oh, it's a wild carrot. That looks like a hemp plant. I know what a weed plant looks like. It looks like a weed plant. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a weed plant right there. Don't ask me how I know, but, like, you know, it kind of looks like a weed plant. As I can tell, there doesn't really seem to be a way to pick up my workbench and move it over here to my central area. So maybe I'll use this tile for all my crafting stuff, like my smelters and things of that nature. And then maybe I'll use this area just for, like, resting R&R, &R, relaxation, all that kind of fun stuff. What do we want to build now? we got to build something. So we've got a bone axe right here, if we can find a few more bones. We can also make bone meal, which is used as a fertilizer. I don't have anything to cook just yet, so I don't think that I'm going to need... Yeah, I don't think that I'm going to need a campfire just yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at our workbench and just see what things we have in here that may advance our goals within the confines of the world. So as far as furniture goes, we do have a smelter, but we need some clay for that. We can make a tannery. I think that's a really good idea. We need iron to make an anvil. So it looks like the tannery is pretty much all that we can get done for right now. That being said, I'm okay with getting it done. I... So it looks like we may, in fact, have to build a homestead. I think the tannery might only be able to be deployed inside of a player-built structure. I was running around the map a little bit, and the tannery just kind of stays red. There doesn't seem to be a spot where it allows placement. So I'm thinking maybe it has to be on top of a foundation. So let me farm up a few of the things that I think we're going to need in order to build our house. And then I'll probably bring you all back on in for the actual building process itself. 
Okay, so I've got the stuff gathered on up. Let's build ourselves this little kind of hut house we're going to be living in. I decided to go small scale. I think we'll probably just go like three by three out here. However, the tiles don't appear to be that big, but I am pleased to report that the snapping appears to work quite well, in fact. Like, the snapping is tight and responsive. That's really, really good. With a lot of building games, what I find is they, especially, like, if they have Z-levels involved, they can get a little bit wispy with the attachment and the snapping that goes into getting pieces to actually fit together. So anytime I feel snapping that's very, very tight and tactile and just, like, pops in naturally, and all the planks are shaped kind of the same way, like the game read into that, I don't know if I got lucky in this case or if the game actually does pay attention to the actual facing of the floor planks or whatever but either way the whole thing looks great and it seems to work exactly how you want it to work next up we've got some walls to slap on in so i would suggest that we do that uh, they are on our nine key right now so we'll go ahead and put in some walls over here yeah i'll probably go like something like that right there i don't know if i'm gonna have enough walls to actually finish off this project it looks like we're gonna need about two more walls is what it looks like to me but I do have some other stuff laying around in my backpack that I think we can make use of. So I've got a window like right there and then we'll kind of open up the house on that side. And then over here, I've got my door. So there's my door right there. That's actually like a nice look. That's like a little colonial style. Look at the cladding right there, dude. If you don't know what that's called, it's called cladding. And it's basically there's like stucco like underneath that, but then they kind of like decorate it with like some wood boards or whatever. I mean, in the case of modern houses, this house right here, it appears as though the cladding actively is the wall itself. Which is kind of an interesting choice. Probably just decorative to make it look a little bit nicer. I need one more wall, please. So if you could get me fit up with another wall, and then I think we're going to need more roofs too. Let's go ahead and roof it on up real fast. And I have experience in this regard. I know what I'm doing. How rare is that? Splattercat actually knows what he's doing. Did I just make another foundation? Me big dumb. Okay. Never mind. Kind of get those in right there. We do have kind of like a bit of a roof problem right there. But hey, let me see if it'll let me put down my tannery. That's all that I wanted to know, really. That's the only reason I did this. Ah, it does let you place the tannery, so it, like, actually has to be on the inside the house. Okay, well, we have a tannery now. So that means if we go out and hunt anything, we should be able to do something with that. We've got hemp and plant fibers. That's good, because that'll give us access to rope. So there we go. And we've got a little bit of leather ready to rock, so we'll go ahead and get that moving as well. That's all been prepped. Leather strips can be made out of flint and leather right there. It looks like we can get an anvil, a fletching table. We're definitely going to need the smelter. How hard is it to mash out the smelter? I think we needed metal for that, right? Let's take a look. Uh, no, we need clay, actually. So we need to spawn a tile that actively has access to clay. Otherwise, this is not going to work out. But first things first, we got to actually, like, drink some water. There we go. We'll get ourselves all nice and squared away. The good news is because we have this well nearby, if I remember correctly from the last demo, the well basically gives you, like, infinite water. And we lucked out and got that on the first tile that we spawned off to the side. I need a couple more logs in order to make this all work. And so I suppose I shall endeavor to get that finished off. I would have thought that you'd be able to get inside the train, as denoted by that door being open right there on the side of that car. But unfortunately, can't really do it. One thing I would recommend is that they should probably add some suction to the items that land on the ground. Uh, whenever you destroy, like, a node, it drops all of its loot on the ground, and you've got to walk over the top of it in order to grab it. But due to the isometry, and I think, like, some of the collision boxes, uh, from time to time, you'll run directly over the top of something or, like, over the side of something, and it won't suck up. I think they're giving it a very, very slight gravitational pull towards the character. Not, like, obvious where, like, stuff from over there is sucking all the way over here, but from, like, standing right here, it should just go zoop, zoop. Like, just something a little bit closer to make it a little bit faster, and I think quality of life feel a little bit smoother. We have enough to build another tile, so let's go ahead and do that before we take a nap for the night. We can get mountains, we can get pine forest over here, or we can get mountains. Let's do a mountain over here. I like the idea of having, like, a little mountainous area. But alas, we've got to take a nap. 
And so we'll go ahead and rest over here for a little bit and see what that does for us. Our sleep meter's looking kind of deprived right now, and so I'd like to get that all squared away. Good news is, I was worried that if we did the rock area, we weren't going to end up with a whole lot of extra trees to play around with. But indeed we did. Doesn't look like there's any clay over here. If I have enough logs, I think I can make a pickaxe. Yeah, let's make a pickaxe real fast. There we go. We are pickaxed. I'll probably put that on my two, and then for my food and drinks, probably put that on my four, probably put that on my five. I don't even know what that is. Snake oil. Apparently, it restores my sanity. We just got to get some of the squeezins of a snake deep down inside of our body. So if you're ever not feeling too good, you got to go squeeze the snake, man. It's the only way to bounce back cowboy style. Now, we need, we need clay in order to advance. I'm going to guess that that's going to be like I live in an ancient river. Like where I live right now used to be a river like millions of years ago, like a big one. And so typically where you're going to find clay is places where there used to be rivers. And so I'm guessing there's going to be like a creek tile or there's going to be like a water tile of some kind that will give us access to the clay that we need. There's a graveyard that's kind of spooky. I don't know if I want to have like ghosts right next to my house. Does it actually cycle if I come up here? Oh, it does. Cool. So there's a mine over here. Let's get a mine. Yeah, that sounds rad. I'm hoping they add some kind of blending in between the tiles so that, like, the biomes are not as distinct from one another as they are right now. I think that having a little bleed over between the tiles, just like a little bit of, like, I don't even know if it would be, like, dithering or, like, shading between the two color palettes as the one runs into the other, I think would really, really help with making it look pretty. Uh, we've got lots of loot over here, so let's go ahead and search this mine real fast. We've got a hide right there. It's going to bring our leather working up a little bit. Another hide on that side. This has the distinct appearance of possibly being the clay that we were looking for. And indeed, that was the clay that we needed. I can't mine my way on into there, although I think that would be really, really cool if that was an actual mechanic inside the game. Like, when you find a collapsed mine like this, you can either take the TNT barrels and line them up over here, and it'll, like, make a dungeon for you that's underground or something like that. I don't know how combat-heavy they're trying to get the game. I know that there's, like, zombies, and I know that this is supposed to be post-apocalyptic in, like, some way. Like, I've seen other people fighting zombies and stuff while they're cruising around once they have, like, guns and bows and things like that. And so... That's later on in the game, but for right now, we're just trying to get settled. We're going to need some water pretty soon, too. Okay, so now that we got our clay, I think we can go back. And actually, we don't have any iron for the forge anyways, or the smelter. So maybe we'll wait until we've actually isolated where iron is at before we go fully in on that project. I may start building a few more buildings around here. Can I harvest the cacti? Maybe I should try see what's up with these cactuses over here. Oh, some feathers. Nice. Doesn't look like the cacti are harvestable, so I don't think we can do anything with that just yet. Oh, there's another crate back here. And another. there's another clay deposit over here as well. I do like how they have little things squirreled away behind the actual line of sight of what you can see when you first come in. I actually really, really like that. It sort of encourages you to cruise around and actually check all the nooks and crannies for anything that might be useful. There's an overturned minecart right there, but I don't think we can actually do anything with that. Exploring the world, we can go with a level two mines over here. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get that rocked out. Maybe that's where we'll find some iron? Maybe not. But there's lots of crates and things over here that we can go through. Got another hide right there. That looks good. Okay. I'm going to get this crate down here. And then I think we're going to have to fall back for a little bit and actually find some more wood because I don't think we can expand the world out any further without a few trees to really make the ultimate sacrifice so that our exploration can be concluded. Let's maybe push things out a little bit further behind this village right here. Like, maybe we can actually do, like, a village level two. Looks like we mostly got, like, canyons and mesas and stuff like that. And, in fact, it does look like, oh, hey, there's a zombie over here. All right, we probably want to stay away from him just in case. Doesn't appear as though they're too fast, though. So I think we should be able to get around it. Hey, more bones. Nice. I'd really actually like to be able to craft that bone axe. 
if we can find enough bones around here to actually get it done. Okay, free blueprint. I'll take it. It's not the bone I was looking for, but like, fair. Fair. Uh, how hard do these guys hit? So there's 27 damage right there. 40 damage. Actually looks like they go down pretty easy. Uh, combat feels more or less, it's just like Diablo. You left click and hold and they attack and then eventually they die, I guess. Uh, I don't know if there's loot on these guys. It doesn't appear to be so. So I'm going to say there's probably no loot going on, but we got chewed on pretty good right there. Just getting rid of those guys. And so I think we're going to have to look for ranged weapon options. Oh, I can light a fire right there too. What is this? Just another fur bed. All right, we'll sleep for the night. Go. Uh, we are going to have to handle our water, and we are going to have to handle our hunger, though. And in fact, we actually don't have a whole lot of food. I don't think I saw any berries down this way. We may have to further expand the world out a bit. Yeah, I'll put in another pine forest over here just for... Oh, okay. All right. What's up, dude? Well, there's bunnies and there's deer and there's other stuff over here. So if I can actually get myself like a bow crafted, we can hunt. There we go. That's the food that I was looking for. We got to fill this meter up. Unfortunately... I think we're going to use all this food just getting our meter filled. I don't think there's any other way around it. Unfortunately, foraging is not entirely the most filling of activities. It looks like the zombies are easy enough as long as you don't like stand there like you reset and then go back in and swing once. It doesn't look like they have any surprises that they're going to reach out and grab you with. Grab that right there. I'm guessing like the zombies might be like a placeholder as of right now. Because, like, they, they look like they're from, like, an asset pack or something like that. Whereas everything else in the game has, like, a nice custom look to it. Like, they remind me of, like, uh, what's the name of that game? Ten Miles to Safety or whatever. Like, that graphics pack. Like, whatever that Unity assets pack is. The zombies kind of look like that, so I'm kind of wondering if they're a placeholder or not. Alright, so we've got enough food to last us probably another day or two. But we are going to want to figure out how in the hell we can shoot some bunnies. Otherwise, we're going to have a bad time. So let's go ahead and find our way back. I would also like for them to add a map. I think a map would be a fantastic idea as you expand the world out. Um, it would be cool if they had like kind of a tile-based map you could zoom in and zoom out on. I don't know if that's planned or not. So for the next workbench, we need steel ingots. We don't have, like, a fletching table or anything inside of here that we can make as of right now. However, we can make the smelter, so we'll go ahead and do that real fast. Just so that it's done. I don't know if having, like, a full-on industrial smelter inside of a house that's made out of logs is, like, intensely a good idea or not. But, like, I'm gonna do it anyways because I don't make smart decisions. Uh, I don't know if I have anything to smelt. You can make glass. Yeah, make some glass real fast. Maybe it'll unlock some recipes. Doesn't look like it did. Yeah, doesn't look like we got any recipes out of it, so... Oh well, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Don't mind that, it's just my personal lava dispenser that I keep inside of my house. Yes, you know, I like to keep uh, several gallons of just sort of flaming lava available at any given time, just in case the situation necessitates it. You never know when you're going to need a bucket of hot lava right this second. It's a nice utility item to keep around the house. We haven't expanded the map out this way yet. Let's do some farmland because we need food sources. Like, seeing the farm inside the list of things we can potentially build actually feels pretty smart to me. Unfortunately, this is a undead zombie farm, so we're going to have to watch out. However, there is wheat here, which sort of implies that we might be able to make some bread. Actually, that zombie looks a little bit more custom. Maybe it's just like a weird angle. That zombie looks a little bit more tailored to the game. All right, I'm going to grab all this wheat real fast. Our weapon does appear to have cleaving on it, so if the actual model itself 
makes contact, or at least there seems to be some kind of like invisible cone or something that comes off the character when you swing your weapon, because I have been able to hit multiple nodes simultaneously pretty much this entire time when I've been farming in between cuts. Uh, there's some, oh, there's another well over here too. Good. Well, I suppose that our tower is kind of secure for right now. There's one iron ore right there. I had figured iron would be something you mine, but it looks like you just kind of get it from like random crates or whatever. I'm sure there's iron nodes. Like there's gotta be iron nodes around, right? My worry is that like possibly the zombies are gonna respawn right here and be right next to my house. That's the part that concerns me. But our meters are good. We're looking solid. Unfortunately, our health is looking pretty terrible right now. We're like half health. And I'm, I don't know exactly how to restore that. I assume we can make foods or medicines or something of that nature from some of the things that we've found around. But thus far, hard to say. All right, so we need a cook place in range in order to do this. We can make a whole bunch of wheat, which will probably unlock bread of some kind. Yeah, there's strong wound powder right there. Old Doc Quackenbush's cure-all. I don't know if I trust that. Going on over here. Oh, there's actually other people, and they've got mm. questy boys for me. We've been out here for days and can't go home. This fire and a handful of provisions are all that stand between us and the grave. During our escape from Corpse Creek, we lost most of our provisions to the lost souls when they attacked us. Please help us get the provisions mm. back. Okay, yeah, mm. I could probably do that. Is that an iron node? That looks like an iron node. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys got iron over here? And nobody told me? Oh, it's tin. Okay. But, like, looting the tin appears to have unlocked the entire suite of, of steel gear? I don't know. A little bit odd. Not exactly sure what we're going to use the tin for. Tin, kind of useful as a material, but, like, not really. I mean, it's fine. Like, it's better than, you know, it's better than not having any tin at all, but... I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of like, you know, meandering. What does the laudanum do except get you high as hell? Heals wounds or at least makes you care about them less. Some people get addicted. Sweet, dude. Time to laudanum it up, dude. I'm trying to get my Edgar Allan Poe on. Uh, my name is Splattercat, though. We're out of time for the day. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. Steam nowadays is a cluttered mess. There's just way too many games on it. It's, like, impossible to navigate. And so I spend my free time doing that, so you won't have to do that. Uh, that's all I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed Above Snakes. I think the game feels promising for an alpha demo. This feels good, and there's already been improvement in the last eight or nine months since we covered the game last time from their previous Steam Festival demo. And so I'm happy to say that, like, I can see where the game is going, and I'm excited to kind of, like, jump on board and just keep an eye on it. You guys know me. I'm a sloppy sucker for anything that incorporates survival, so I figured I would share it with you once more now that the developers gave me access to kind of, like, a new exclusive branch. I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot fresh off the indie skillet. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Aside from that, I will be back, and I will return tomorrow with something else for you to check out. But for right now, that's all I got. Bye, everybody.